what's up guys, of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your rule, of course, the Scarender. And today we're going up against Hannah Panna. Uh, Hannah Panna is a Swedish uh, Pokemon player herself, much like me, and a very good one at that, so I have a lot of fun battling her, mostly because, like I said, she's on par with me in the lower tiers and definitely beats me even in the higher. Uh, so she's fairly good, like, I, I respect her as a player and it's a lot of fun. Uh, battling a fellow countryman really because of that very reason alone. Now I did the Aspen Aria match and we're going up against a very tough team actually. I really like this oppression here with Steelix, Hitmonlee, Rotom, Mantine, Delphox and Abipom. Uh, I myself has assigned a new team. Uh, it was not complete. I really want Jellicent outside of uh, Gastrodon but I didn't have Jellicent in my in my boxes for some reason which was super strange <laughs> nevertheless. Uh, since Kubalion and uh, Slowkin disappeared, um, Weezing got pretty decent in RU, so I really like using that. Uh, having Glalie as a defensive wall breaker, uh, Gastrodon, Flygon as a sweeper this time around, Virision as a second sweeper, and then Sigilyph as a failsafe. Um, Sigilyph uh, fitted this team real nicely with coverage and move, and I do realize that I am not prepared for a Mantine and that's gonna be a real issue throughout this match. Look, I thought that electric move was redundant in RU and uh, I'm gonna be proven wrong in this game you guys will see just why, so let's do this. So anyway, her obvious lead here was Ambipom or Nikki Nusfisken which is a, I think, a curious um, something, U curious George, right? It's uh, the, the curious monkey basically, so she's gonna go for fake out it was no reason for me not to start off with Weezing, being that it's a defensive wall, and it could stain on this, it could work with this really well, and um, basically, she's gonna do the fake out and then U-turn combo, and it's not really hurting my Tyro Sail that much. And I was so close of naming this Weezing Seed Balls for you guys who are thinking about it, <laughs> which is definitely gonna be a thing, I hope. And I just went for a Will-O-Wisp here, in case you wanted to have like a last resort combo on me, I thought that will o could help me out a lot here, so I figured that would be my best choice. Now, I know I can take a Thunderbolt or a T-Wave if that was the case, I didn't really have to worry about it, but she's gonna show me the trick. And that is genuinely intimidating, because I don't like to be scarfed, I don't like to be scarfed. The defensive wall does really not like that, and of course now I'm locked into Sludge Bomb, and I was figuring here either um, that I could stay in, but at the same time she will definitely bring Steelix here, knowing that I'm locked. So she's gonna get her free rocks up, and there's really nothing to do about it. And I don't want to risk bringing Flygon just yet, because Flygon might do well, but this thing could also pack Ice Fang. Uh, I basically have to find out what kind of set this is before I really do anything. So I'm gonna bring, of course, my Slugger, the Gastrodon, and like I said, he's a substitute for a potential Jellicent. And I realized here that, you know, being that Mantine is part of her roster, there is nothing I can do. I'm dual stab Toxic Recover, which means that Mantine is completely immune to me. Uh, so I knew that, so I had to do a pull a double switch going to bring Ashguard, uh, the Glalie, because of course now I know at least that I can at least freeze try this thing and I guess that's my only real response throughout this match so she's gonna bring Chrome back on and of course that's really fine there's really nothing I can do uh, but I did want to check out how much damage a potential double edge do from Glalie um, I think I just go for freeze right here and I should get the freeze on this which of course is incredible but uh, like I said, I wanted to check out how much double edge really did since it was frozen. There's not often I get a chance to do so. And I think the freeze here actually made me play really badly here because she will fall out and I'll lose my Glalie right here and then. Yeah, that just happened. First turn, fall out. So the freeze actually made me stay in with Glalie because I want to check out the damage, which of course means the Manta got. Really, really, really scared now because now I got nothing for it. I mean, I got Stone Edge on Virisian, sure, but really, <laughs> what, what should I do? What, <laughs> I can't take it out from full health. I know that for sure. And of course, it packs the air slash, which actually ocos my Virisian. So I can't bring it in onto it. 
And the, basically what we are gonna do here is exchange Toxics against one another, which is really nice, but as I stated before, she will win the matchup. She does pack the Air Slash, which means that she will do a bit more damage than I do, um, but at the same time, I have no idea what I should do from this situation, I just, I don't. Luckily, she actually decides to switch out, which is nice. The unfortunate part is that she brings Chrome, which of course is doing well. Luckily, I went for Earth Power, which, mind you guys, it was, it was not a prediction. I just, I had no other option. I was basically showing her that she'll win the matchup. I can stay and get stalled out. I'm fine with that. I'll, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was basically, during this game, once I realized how big of a threat Mantine was for my team, I basically just scratched my head and wondered, what, what could I do, how should I do, and why would I do? So I'm gonna bring Mitos here, because I realized that this is probably the only thing who can potentially hit it. Uh, Air Slash does respectable amount of damage, not a whole lot really. And I realized that Psyshock probably is in the range of a 50% hit. So I figured that that would be probably my best bet, but of course he's gonna switch out to Nikki, and the uh, Psyshock will do. Actually, I think it was it did pretty fairly here, almost killing her, and there is no reason for me to stand in, uh, but taking that fake out uh, since Sigilith actually might be one of the few responses I have for that Mantine. Now, the Nikki <laughs> is gonna go for knockoff, which is just really, really, really nice. I I was so glad over this, and she's actually gonna switch out Nikki, probably saving that fake out for another round, which is completely fine. I felt that was a possibility, so I decided to go for pain splits and stealing some HP there. <laughs> yes, so I'm gonna say a stroke of luck because that would have been had her hit me, she would have died to life for any way the pain would not hit anything. So. It was my best bet, really. So I'm gonna bring Sigilith back on here and basically do damage. I mean, I can't predict her bringing the Nikki again, and that would be just fine. But she has Delphox, which is uh, really, really tough for me to stop. Because no matter how I pull it, Delphox will outspeed my whole team outside of Verision, and I knew that. So I needed to have to play this fodder game really. So I'm gonna bring Slugger. Basically, what I wanted to do was to lure her to go for the solar beam. I thought that it was a possibility she would have that, but she actually packs life orb here, which made me believe that okay, I could stay on this. I really don't have to worry. And I knew grass knot is a thing, but I thought that at the same time. There is not a whole lot my slugger can do anyway, so I might as well fart if she packs the grass knot. And there it is. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Shit happens. So at least now I get an honest chance here to bring, of course, Verision, which I have quite been waiting for because it can't come in on anything, but when it comes in, it can force out things, which is what it's all about. And due to me not knowing if it matters or uh, timid, there is no reason for me to bring a Flygon, because Flygon will get a good chunk of loss of damage, if that were the case. Now, I'll go directly for Stone Edge, because I need that damage to go there up, be up there, really. And, um, I do believe she's gonna send me now the um, Hitmonlee, and until now, I don't know if this is a normal gem set, or if it is a Scarf set, so I decided to switch out, and basically bring Mephos for Sack, really, uh, to find that out. But luckily, she shows me the normal game. Which means that this is down burden set, which also means that I can force her out and I should have no issue. And there is a knockoff and boom bada boom. <laughs> Me folks is gone. So didn't do a whole lot more than scouting, which was I guess fine. Um But yeah, due to me knowing now that this is the defensive set, I don't really fear it. I don't. I can force it out. I so that was definitely a tough play for her to make, but then again, that was the only way she, can, she could avoid a potential Verision sweep from that range, because Verision is um, its not getting stopped by anything. If I can't get it in freely, then it's all okay. Now, she will show me that she is Resto Shesto, and I was like, oh man, this this thing is not gonna go down, it's just, <laughs> it just keeps coming. And of course, you know, I, I go for Sludge Bomb, and I guess the damage is nice. I guess. But, um, yeah, there is... Um, I'm not gonna win this matchup. What I'm trying to do here 
is force her man tied down to a low amount of HP and then fall. I guess that's that's not a solid strategy though, but that's the only one I got. And you know, I'm gonna go for slash bomb basically to get something in there and hoping that she doesn't start resting again because then we'll just chain split. And basically forcing her down as long as I can and then bringing something to revenge kill it. And I thought that was honestly my best course of action. And because I still got flag on a good HP, I don't have to worry about Hitmonly at this point, which means I can bring in my choice banded Flygon and hopefully uh, survive a psychic from the Del Fox and then win the game. There is nothing hindering me here, everything on her team is significantly slower than Flygon. And just to have that said, Flygon might be one of those Pokemon that is potentially one of the nicest sweepers in uh, RU. It has so much variety to it. But uh, this actually really works. <laughs> it actually works really well with 100 base speed. Now, that attack shows me right there and then that she was modest, not timid. Which was super important because that was the reason I didn't bring Flygon in the first place. Uh, and there is nothing she can do against this Flygon aside of, of course, Fake Out, which of course forces me to go into confusion. But it won't matter because I'm still a Flygon and Mirage is never failing me. She is so great at killing things that it's not even funny. And that is actually GG. So, yeah, looking back at this game, there are a few factors here that makes me eventually win this game. And honestly, I think if the situation with uh, Glalie versus Steelix didn't happen like the way it did, this would probably be a much shorter game in my favor. Sounding really arrogant, but really now, I did actually suck my Glalie just in vain because I was thinking that she wouldn't fall out. <laughs> but it actually, the, that very turn made this battle that much more interesting due to that, to be honest. Because Glalie is actually very, very threatening in this tier. And um, so were Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee, uh, you know, once the Unburden effect was gone, uh, I had my Weezing in... Um, in caliber of surviving Hitmoli, but once Hitmoli's pressure was really gone for this game, um, there was not a lot of thing holding either Verision nor Flygon away from her, and they could just jab out really. And that's one of those things. Like um, Hitmoli is super super intimidating, but I guess the Scarf set is doing better because it isn't as reliant on, uh, on of course the Unburden effect. Unburden is super super good. If you can pull it off late game, if you can stay in, and um, I guess she was a bit early on that, but then again, she had very few choices left once Verisian entered the, the battle arena, if anything. So, Hannah, I want to thank you so much for this battle, and I was really, really glad to have an RU game, finally, like a really competitive one, and I hope we can get more of those in the future, and I hope we can, of course, get more battles from you, because, like I said, you are a threat to be reckoned with in higher tiers, so... Yeah, I want to thank everybody for watching. As always, of course, make sure to leave a like if you like this video. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky is limit. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.